Hello, hello everybody. I hope you are well. My name is Nicolas Catelier. I am an architect, a BIM specialist, and the founder of Revit Pure. Uh, welcome to Revit Pure Live, a show where we help you become a better Revit user. Most of the time, I have guests with me on the show uh, that presents on various topics. Uh, today is a very special occasion. It will be all by myself and, of course, with you guys, uh, keeping a close eye on the chat. And I will be presenting the brand new update to our beginner's course called Basics 2023. I'm going to talk about the philosophy behind the course, why I decided to create it. And also, this is an update to an existing course that has sold a couple of thousand copies. So I'm going to talk also to existing customers to what they can expect. And then I have a lot to talk about. So during the session, after we've done the, with the beginner course, there are a couple of things I want to talk about. Uh, first, I just came back from Autodesk University in New Orleans. It was amazing. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about that. This will be uh, later. I am planning for the fall many big things before the end of the year. This should be an epic closer to this year. I want to try cohort-based courses. What is that? It's, it would be live courses uh, with a smaller number of people with live sessions on Zoom. Anyway, I'm going to talk about that later. And also, I will shortly announce the guest for the next season of Rivet Pure Live. Rivet Pure Live season four. It's going to be about mostly about families. I want to talk about Rivet families. We have lots of interesting guests. This should be a lot of fun. As always, already I was uh, chatting a bit with the folks in the chat. We've got uh, a few people from the Midwest, I was saying, from Iowa and Hawaii. Uh, I think that's in the Midwest. Is that right? hoping so we've got people from argentina people from uh we have got pedro from Porto living in brazilia now uh, we've got mikhail from israel patrick from ghana uh, italy armenia florida germany uh, california and downtown la uh, it's nice to see people around the world so if you're watching you can keep writing where you're from it's always fascinating for me to see where people are watching from all right so before moving on, um, <laughs> we are Wednesday afternoon, but I want to celebrate too, right? I've just released a big update to my to a course. So I've got I've got a non-alcoholic beer. So I've got actually actually got to celebrate, but not feeling too bad since we're Wednesday at 2 p.m. <laughs> right? So opening this, this is called from the Griffintown Brewery in Montreal. So cheers to you guys. And reading the comments as I am pouring my non-alcoholic beverage in my glass, um, we got Robert from the Netherlands, Yuan from, Frank uh, from Frankfurt, Bruno from North Carolina, Amit from India, Vivania from Argentina, Pranav from India, Jonathan from New Zealand. It's pretty early. I saw somebody from Australia. It's like not even 5 a.m. there. So thanks for being there. Uh, a, a few usual guests, I recognize the name, Dustin from Cape Town and Ricky from Hong Kong. Oh my God, thank you guys. This is amazing. Uh, lots of people showing up. All right, let me pour this. Non-alcoholic, we'll see how good this is. Um, not bad, not bad. I mean, it's not a real beer. So it's not as good, but it does the job. It's it's fine. It's fine. Uh, cheers to you guys. And thanks for being there. I'll admit I was, I wonder, will people show up since I'm mostly talking about a course and not a specific Revit topic like I usually do, but like currently 88 viewers. So we are live. Like some of you watching the replay, this is live right now, October 5th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So maybe if you're watching like in 2050, uh, this, you're, uh, you're watching a time capsule right now. Some of the things I mentioned might not be up to date. But if you're watching October, October uh, 5th, 2022, uh, we are live right now. Okay. 
All right, so yay, I just worked all summers on updating the basics course. The original version of basics was released in 2017 in April to be more precise. And it got quite popular. And I was due for a big update. I mean, along the years, I've updated the course with some minor changes, appended the videos, or fixed some of the content, but I never did kind of a, a whole makeover, especially redoing every single video from scratch. So that's what I have done. It's a major update to the beginner's course. Uh, if you want to get it, you can go straight over to Revit Pure website. On the first page, you can either click here to go to the main basics course. If you scroll down over there, well, you can read the page if you want to get more information about it uh, or else you can click over here and there's a coupon code that is fall 2022 that is written over there uh, but if you click there it should be embedded the coupon should be embedded as you can see here it says discount fall 2022 25 percent off although here it's the regular price that that shows up so I, i've got some email that's saying hey the discount shows up but it's the regular price so don't worry uh, after you've entered your email address, if you scroll down, eventually you would see the discount just like this. And I also add an email. Somebody says the, the pay now button is grayed out. What's what's going on? I cannot click. So you just need to check this box. And then uh, after you've entered your credit card or PayPal information, you will be able to get it. I just wanted to clarify this. I get like, every time I launch something, I got lots of questions. I cannot put the coupon code. I don't understand what's going on. Totally fine. Yeah. All these different checkout methods can get confusing sometimes. But yeah, the discount should be embedded. And if not, you can manually type it just like this. So the discount like this. So by the way, there's a discount right now. We're fall October 5th. So if you're watching live, there's a discount. Maybe by the time you watch this, there won't be any more. I don't do a lot of sales during the year. Uh, so if you're interested, make sure to get it, of course, with a discount. Yeah, this ends uh, Monday, October 10, by the way, the promotion. All right. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, looking at the questions already, uh, ScarDX says, did you meet anyone famous at AU? A actually, yes, I've met so many people. It's insane. Autodesk University is AU, by the way. Uh, everyone was there. It was quite fascinating. Uh, yeah, I'm going to show a, a picture later on. A pretty funny picture to show you guys about Autodesk University. Before, um, and uh, Low Designo asks, does the discount apply to the full course? Yes, it does to the uh, the full basics course. And actually, if you scroll down, you can see here you can also buy a super bundle that combines the three courses: basics, design, and manage. And the coupon also works for that. So it's the coupon works for the whole website. You can. Use the promo code FALL2022 on any course, the basics, design, manage. Uh, if you don't know, manage is the one I released last year. I would say this is probably my my baby, my little favorite one, because it's all the pain I had as a BIM manager for like 10 years. I've created a course that I wish I had when I got started trying to be a BIM manager. So this is a more advanced course. And design, this one is... Uh, people kept telling me Revit cannot be used to create uh, beautiful drawings and everything created, all drawings created in Revit are ugly and there's no line hierarchy and it sucks. And I was like, that's not true. Like if you understand some tools and you are careful by the way you plan your graphic, it's actually possible to create a great presentation views directly in Revit and 3D views and so on. So I created a course just for that. So yeah, here are the three courses basics design and managing get, get them all with the current discount pretty good deal and in addition we also have the pro template uh, it can have the, the discount also applies although in this case maybe you'll have to manually enter it I'm not sure yeah you can enter the discount right here if you want it works for everything on the website just like this okay so anyway, yeah, get your copies, rivetpure.com slash basics. And there's going to be a giveaway, by the way. So uh, stand right by uh, to get a chance to win a copy. And uh, Mikal says that Manage is great. Thank you, Mikal. I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, my Manage, I will say I have a special place in my heart for it because I don't think there's 
anything similar in, in the world. I actually haven't seen it. A course that is focused more on workflows and strategies for BIM managers uh, on Revit. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, so it's the major update. Everything has been updated to for 2023. I'm going to talk about the course. But first, let's do it. Let's do the giveaway. So I'm going to activate the giveaway. And once it is activated, wait a minute, it's not yet ready. But when I say it is, you can type raffle exclamation mark in the chat. Let me start this. Okay, so normally the the giveaway should be started. So type in exclamation mark raffle, just like this in the chat. Just type this in the chat. And it will last for about five minutes. And when five minutes are done, uh, you will get a chance to win a copy of the course. It will randomly pick someone among the crowd. Although then when it, that's done, the winner will uh, need to send me an email to nick at revitpure.com. So I can already see the raffle. Uh, Jesus, you made a mistake in the raffle. You added the E, so. All right. The chat is going crazy. I love it. I love it. Everybody are raffling. I love to see it. Anyway, while this is going on, it will last for about about four minutes left before the winner is announced. Again, I will come back to the slide, but just send an email to nakedrivetpure.com. All right, now I wanted to talk a little bit about the reason why I've decided to create this course in the first place. It even goes to why I created Revit Pure at all. And in 2012, when I moved to Quebec City, I used to live in Montreal, I was hired and my task was to convert the whole office from AutoCAD to Revit. And so I was charged, I think the staff had some uh, training at the local college, but then I was tasked to help them. And what you click quickly learn is even with training, if they don't get immediate experience, it's pretty hard uh, for the staff to learn. And they struggle a lot with Revit. So I decided to purchase a few books, Revit books. Uh, here's one of them I have right here. This is an old version though, Mastering Revit Architecture 2017 by Marcus Kim, Len Kirby, Eddie Craigle. So cheers to these others. And I would say for me, this was a great personal resource. I'm a huge nerd. So like this kind of thing I could spend my evening doing. Uh, yeah, just reading Revit books. It's fine for me. But when somebody at my firm asked, how do I learn Revit? And I was like, okay, take this book. And they, went, they looked at me like, okay, what do you want me to do with that? Like, it's a lot, right? To give a book like this. So I don't want to say that it's not necessarily that this book is boring, but it's it's pretty thick and it can be challenging for users, especially since they don't have a lot of time. If you give this to a student with a lot of time on their hand, maybe it's fine. But I found most people are so busy that it's quite challenging. Um, yeah, to get them to complete the actual course. And I decided to start creating my own learning content. At first, it was just for the office. I've created some capsule and I really wanted to, it for, for it to be visual, super simple to use because I knew my colleagues were busy people. <laughs> uh, so somebody chat says, I have two Revit books on my desk at work, never read them. Yeah, I mean, I mean this is a good research that I see it as more as a reference book I can open every once in a while, but to learn the software from scratch, it's not that easy. So anyway, I decided to start creating my own content. And I thought, Maya, it, it must be ultra simple. Like people can open a PDF and they immediately get the information they need. I started creating a training for my firm and I've got comments from folks saying, it's actually great, should publish this online. I'm like, oh, maybe it's not, that's not a bad idea. And that's the seed began germinating for uh, Rivet Pure. I started to have the idea and thinking about it. And yeah, 
see the thing here. And one of the big thing for me is if I take a book like this and you can see, I actually added a screenshot on the left. Again, no disrespect. I personally use this books like this as a reference, but if you're trying to learn Revit and you see just sentences like this and paragraphs, it's pretty hard to, to understand, you know? And my approach was to use as many images as possible. So the way I see it, it's not text with some images to help you and to support the text. It's the other way around. You put the images first, it's the main content, and then you have a little bit of text, mostly describing commands and any information that is hard to explain using images. But as you can see here, for example, I'm explaining how to use the mirror tool and the align commands and basically creating kind of short sequences uh, of emotion, implying emotion with these images. And I found that user responds greatly to them, to this kind of content that is based on image first with text bonus, you could say, instead of the other way around where it's mostly text and every once in a while they might have an image. All right, so we have 75 people. All right, so it's time to pick the winner uh, of the giveaway. Let's do it. It's, it's too late, people, by the way. <laughs> It, it's too late. You cannot type raffle anymore. Let's do it. Okay. And the winner of the raffle is Dragon Tetsuo. So congratulations to Dragon Tetsuo. Please, Dragon, send me an email. Cool name, by the way. Send me an email to nick at rivetpure.com and I will send you a copy of the basics course immediately. Well, maybe not immediately after the, this live session is done. So congrats to you. I hope you enjoyed the course. I think you will. All right, so I've, I've talked about that, text, visuals, images, base book. So if you ever create your own content, by the way, try to put as many images as possible. If you're online as well, like using PowerPoints, GIFs can, can be pretty good as well. Although GIFs don't work in PDF, so it depends, right? All right, so what's inside of the basics course? What, what's the content inside of it? Well, there are 46 chapters. I think I do have the PDF open right here. 46 chapters divided in five parts. So the first part of the course is all about modeling. First going to the user interface, then how to select and modify elements, then going to the main architecture tools. So yes, uh, um, by the way, this is mostly for architects. Some engineers do use this course, but we don't have specific contents about docs and uh, structural. But you can see all the chapters over there. Then the second part is all about views, creating plan views, sections, elevations, callouts, 3D views, and so on. Third part is about annotating, so 2D lines, tags, regions, dimensions, and so on. The fourth part is about publishing and collaborating, how to create sheets, revisions, printing, using central files in Revit and new from this year, uh, a pretty big chapter about how to use BIM 360, an introduction to BIM 360. Uh, using link files, exporting CAD. And I've added a part about the great DRoots Pro Sheets chapter, and then all about some advanced features. So even though the course is called basics, we do talk about some, let's say, intermediate to advanced topics. Uh, that I thought should still be included in the course, including schedules, phases, work sets, groups, modern place, and families, and design options. Yeah, by the way, model in place, that's pretty funny because I usually recommend never to use this tool, but uh, a client of mine actually mentioned that they use it all the time for their design in the design phase, and it actually can be pretty helpful. So now I'm trying to be careful to say, generally, I wouldn't recommend this tool and use families instead, but every once in a while, maybe in certain cases, it can be okay to use. All right. Uh, we've got people from uh, Montreal as well. Uh, 
uh, how hello to all of you okay and yeah let's go to the online portal uh, so when you buy the course this is what you should see you should see my big face first it's i've just created a very short video explaining uh, how the content is organized And then you have the downloads area. The first thing you can download is the basics template. I'll talk about it shortly later. Then you can download the ebook PDF. So you have a few options on how to use this course. The first one is the PDF. Uh, you can download that, keep that on the computer. And the PDF is a great resource. Sometimes when you have courses, the PDF is more kind of an extract and it's not that good, right? The main part is are really the videos, but I really took care to create a, a great PDF. And the first thing I would do if you end up uh, taking the course is download the PDF and just scroll through it and have a look at all uh, the different tools and modify tools and so on like that. And it gives you a good overview of the course. Then make sure to download that. I did include the pamphlet collection. This is actually free. You can download it for free at uh, revitpure.com slash pamphlets. And here you can download, these are um, 25 PDF guides. Yeah, this is not, not up to date. We're actually uh, 25 now. You can simply enter your email address, download the collection, but it's also, I've also included it in the portal directly. I will say it's mostly more advanced topics. So when you're done with the course and you want to get, take a step further, have a look at the pamphlets. These are great resources. And then we're on with all of the chapters. And something that is new from this year that I'm pretty happy about is that for all the videos, build the videos, you will also get uh, the text and image version, which is basically the content from the ebook, but it has been placed, let me remove this for a while, that has been placed below the video. Yeah, because something I've realized, some people, I would say the most people prefer watching the videos, right? So let's have a look at uh, one on with here. the blue rabbit logo and another one. Say most people prefer watching the videos, but some people, they, they like to have either a glance while they're watching the video, a preview of what it's about. Or if it's kind of a topic they might be familiar with, instead of watching the whole video, they can scroll down and have a look at what it's about, what this video is about. And basically almost all of the content from the video is also reproduced in text and images just below it. So yeah, there are 46 chapters and for about a hundred lessons or sub chapters, you can call them. For example, chapter one, user interface has five sub chapters, the home screen and the ribbon, uh, the status view and options bar, the project browser and properties, 11 tips to understand Revit's user interface, category, family type and instance. And that's for the first chapter. And you can see there are some uh, smaller chapters as well, like uh, chapter two, which is about selecting elements, only a single sub chapter. And you will see if you do get this course, there's a lot of tips based sub chapters like Elven Tips on the Send Rivet User Interface. This is similar to what I do on the Rivet Pure blog. You might see that a lot of articles are titled exactly like this. I found it's a great way to learn. And, and for me, whenever I create content, it's a, a good way to get organized and say, okay, here are, here are the main takeaways that I think users should get from this chapter. So you will see that a lot, like for example, five basic wall tips, five basic levels and grid tips, uh, 10 roof tips and so on and on. You'll see a lot of that. I, I love using tips. It's a great way to learn uh, in the position to just like working like a dictionary on the encyclopedia about the content. Uh, Akash Sarkar, who I would guess is a beginner, asks, what does level do in Revit? Does it work like Photoshop layers? Uh, no, uh, levels, well, let's show the video, right? Uh, levels are not, you can see here in this video, to an elevation. Uh, levels represent real levels, so different height that you can create. So no, it's... Uh, it's not similar to layers at all. It's the way the model is organized. And in Revit, walls, for example, are constrained to levels. So you have the base of the wall could be at level one and the top of the wall could be with an offset over level two, for example.
All right. Uh, Bite-sized videos. So this is a big thing and a big change with this version of the course. The way I used to do it is there was, there was uh, one video per chapter. So 46, uh, 46 chapters, 46 videos. But I've realized and after talking with some people, uh, former customers, uh, customers of the course, that people prefer bite-sized videos. So I would say that that may be between one to 10 minutes, 10 minutes being the exception. Usually I try to keep them shorter. So the average is probably length of each video is about three minutes, which is the perfect size, I think. So it's easy to kind of sneak in a few videos if you're at work trying to learn, but maybe you're busy with other stuff as well. So yeah, an average of three minutes and 10 minutes, there's only kind of a few videos. I think one about schedules, maybe one about walls that are pretty long and a little more exhaustive. And the total length of the course is a bit more than four hours and which might seem short, but the way I create videos is basically insane. <laughs> it, it takes a, a long time. I edit all the videos a lot and I usually record my screen first and then I type a script and I do voiceover and the video is very heavily edited and I want to make sure that I don't waste your time at all. All videos are very strongly edited. I will say that the last version of the course, some people mentioned to me that they thought it was a little fast, especially in some chapters. So for this one, I've decided to slightly slow down a little bit. So it's not as fast as the original version of the course, but I would say it's still general, generally speaking, pretty fast paced as a course. But the thing is, if you are, um, you don't like when things go too fast, well, uh, this is the video player. Let's remove my face. Oh, you don't see the whole thing. Just a second. Okay, sorry about that. So if you go here, you can see that uh, you can change the speed. So you have the one X speed. Can I bring my face back? No, it hides it. Okay. So you have the one X speed, so you can change. If it's too fast for you, just put at 0 0.75. It's similar to YouTube, really. And if you're more of a fast learner, I know typically I like to watch videos on courses at 1.25. Uh, I would be curious. I do have a question for the chat. Are you usually someone who likes to speed things up or usually someone who likes to s slow things down instead? Curious what your answer would be about that. I, I didn't have both. Some people mentioned to me, your videos are way too fast. I always listen at 0.75. And some people mentioned they always they prefer to speed it up. It depends on people, I think. All right. Yeah, so bite-sized videos. Okay, something new this year that I'm very excited about are uh, the subtitles. We have English, French, and Spanish uh, subtitles in the video. So not for the ebook. The ebook itself is all in English, although I eventually want to translate them, but it's a big job. So that's not a short short term project at all. Uh, but right now there are subtitles in English, French, and Spanish. Let's try it out. Let's see. View. Select the level tool in the architecture tab or use so you can see LL. English subtitles over here start point and end point or you can the switch level. to French and uh, for so the, the French, I did proofread it to make sure that the name of the commands are actually ask the names of commands in, in French this level. when you open That's Revit, because each right? Because it's auto translation might get it wrong. For there Spanish, not quite. So I'm really curious the for Spanish speakers. Maybe you have a, a, a few names of commands that are not quite you accurate. If that's the case, levels, let me know. And as many we'll elements see. are typically attached to each of them. For example, let's select this wall and attach it top to this level. All right. Okay. So subtitles, pretty happy about that. I think some of the videos I'm working uh, with someone, Elizabeth, who's working with me. She's lived in Melbourne, Australia, is still placing some of the subtitles. So I think it's for some of the later video, later chapters, uh, she might not be quite there yet. Uh, yeah, like for this one, French is there. A Spanish would be coming the next couple of days. So it's only a question of days. All right. 
So yeah, subtitles, pretty happy about that. I hope that's helpful to you guys. And yeah, let me know in the chat right now. We have English, French, and Spanish. Are there any other languages that you would be interested in getting? I've heard from people mentioning Italian, Portuguese, and uh, Italian, Portuguese, and German. So if there are any other requests for languages, always curious to hear about it. It might take a couple of months, uh, but let me know, please. All right, let's talk about the new content, of course, in addition, like for all the videos being remade from scratch. I would say the biggest one, the one that took the most time to create was about cloud models. So when I started, uh, I launched the original version of the course in 2017, uh, BIM 360 and cloud, Revit Cloud Models, whatever it's called, uh, was quite small and not that many people were using that. And with, with the pandemic, of course, that has become more mainstream, especially in big firms, BIM 360 is a no-brainer. So I added a pretty big chapters about that, which is, if you want to be precise, subchapter 37.2 about how to create cloud models in Revit. I do through the whole thing, how to set up a project uh, how to add teammates, uh, on and on. <laughs> uh, yeah, somebody mentioned Zulu in uh, South Africa. Uh, we'll see about that. And Peter says, what about the great language Swedish? Maybe, why not? I should add all languages, right? So yeah, there's a whole new section about BIM 360 and how to create your projects and that, how to collaborate in the cloud. I talk about some essential plugins as well, like uh, the roots and PyRevit. I talk about placing components. I realized that was something missing that uh, some clients told me about how to load some components like furniture, how to place them, how to modify the properties, uh, using filters, which is a pretty important tool and understanding families. I realized people are so confused about families, the three types of families, right? In place families, loadable families and system families. So I help you understand the difference between them. And yeah, uh, Denise asked for an office learning situations. Can multiple seats to this course be purchased? Yes, I'm getting there, getting there, Denise. Um, yeah, the basics template, I wanted to talk about that with the original version of the course and with this one as well, I've created a new template. I would say it's a pretty simple template. But in it, it starts from the default of this template. I've just added a few things I thought were missing. The first thing being a welcome page that is like a no brainer, super helpful when creating new projects where you can type the name of your project. And whenever you open the file, it will go straight to this page instead of going like to random views, random 3D views. And here you can enter a message to your team and you can be super kind to them. Like, uh, There you go. Or enter warnings. Be careful about this. Be careful about that. So the, the basics template, there's a whole guide about the Revit templates. I've added a note system that I use in all my projects. I've changed the font and I've boosted up the graphics, you know, because I'm tired of people saying that uh, graphics in Revit are ugly. So I've adjusted the line weights and so on. So it, it's basically something I was doing in all my projects. So I've said, okay, let's create a template and give it for beginners. It should be helpful. And so it's all included in the course as well. And finally, the exercise project. So if you want to try everything you've learned during the course, uh, we'll show you. This is actually the final result. So in during this exercise projects, which you get the all the instructions to model this. You will create perspective, interior elevations, a section like this, detailing, a plan view, a schedule with cost for the bricks, and a ceiling plans just like this. It's a pretty, it's kind of a dumb little building. Uh, but this this is the exercise project, and let me show you on the portal. It's at the very bottom. So if you scroll all the way down, there are instructions in both metric and imperial. So let's download the metric file here and see what's up with that. Uh, having a quick look at the questions, Pigeon4x says, does this course discuss anything about detailed components? Yes, we do talk about detailed components. It's not necessarily in depth, but we do mention how to use them and how to get a few of them out of the library. 
And Jose asked, what about keynotes? Are they covered? Not in this course specifically, it's more in the Manage course, which, which is the course for BIM managers. Although included in this, you will get uh, a pamphlet about, a free pamphlet about plan notes. So not exactly keynotes, but plan notes using uh, symbols, which is a great technique for beginners. Let me show that. So there it is. This is pamphlet number eight. It is included in the course. So yeah, these pamphlets are included in the package. It can be found for free as well. And plan notes, I explained a whole system that I've been using success successfully for years. It's not using the keynote system. Keynotes can be great as well, but I found this, this strategy works pretty well. So that's what included about in this course. And now, yeah, this is the instruction you will get for the exercise project. Uh, first, you can use the basics uh, template to start the project. And then I give you instructions, model these walls with these dimensions, how to modify a wall structure. So I just give you a set of instructions to follow. And normally if you've done the course and you've practiced a little bit, you should be able to model the whole thing. It's not that complicated, right? So you can see a preview of what you need to do, place the doors, place the ceilings, place the windows, create a curtain wall, create stairs, a floor shaft, railings, anyway. And then we go on and on with annotations. And when you're done, or if you get stuck, there are actually a video tutorial, a pretty long video tutorial. While the other videos are super edited, this one is more freestyle, a bit like what I'm doing now, where it's uh, the camera is open and I just play around and try to follow the exercise. So a little more casual than the rest of the course. Uh, uh, Scoward DX asks, is your content will be in Imperial as well as metric? The course itself is, is using metrics, like in the examples in the ebook. Although the templates is included in both units and the instructions as well are included in both units. So it's possible if I look at this, let me find an example. So yeah, for if you look at the examples, I will be using a metric, although to me, I don't think it's a big deal because it, it doesn't show, you don't necessarily get instructions. So you can use the course still by playing around inside of an Imperial file, I think. There's a question about English measurements. So we'll go to that later. Uh, yeah, okay. So this is the, the secret, this super lab, secret lab, I don't remember. But this little project that I've created for you to follow. Uh, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Suru Denise, and she's the artist I've hired to create the cover of these courses. She's the one that also created uh, the Manage uh, course cover last year, the one I released last year. And I added the address to her Instagram over there. So let's go there. Yeah, I just randomly stumbled upon her on Instagram one day. And thought, wouldn't it be cool if I hire an artist instead of having a super boring cover? I tried to have something uh, more playful and more colored. So you can see a sample of her work. Uh, yeah, she's very inspired by uh, her travels to Japan, I think, and uh, Anemes. So uh, thank you to Denise for uh, creating the cover. And there was a question earlier from Denise about the other Denise, Denise Balmer, asking about group training. Yes, it's something I don't publicize that much. But since the original version of the course was released, I've been working uh, with multiple firms uh, and with some big names. I've included a few of them at the bottom. Uh, PSC Stream, they're from Paris, UNS Studio, Edward Studio, and many others as well, as well as universities and colleges. Uh, that are looking for great Revit training. I know many of you in the chat might be more intermediate to advanced users. And if that's the case, uh, maybe basics can be a good solution for you for group training. Whenever you have new staff and they're busy, maybe they don't have time for like a crazy amount of hours for training. I think this solution basics is pretty good and it's been successfully used. I've had good comments about all these firms I've been working with. And here's the pricing. Uh, for a, basically the first user of your firm pays a regular price 
and then each extra user pays in the case of basics for business seventy dollars and if it's for education so for colleges universities high school and so on uh it's fifty dollars for each extra user and the constraint is being on the same domain name so if uh, you were interested in that uh, you can email me uh, at nick at rivetpure.com if you have any question you can also we can book a small chat if you want to discuss this further but yeah i've been working with multiple firms about let's say about 30 to 40 firms and businesses have been training their employees using uh the basics course and it, this is the pricing for basics it's the most popular one the beginner training some also got the design and managed courses as well it is possible uh Pigeon 4X as is the license perpetual. Yes, this is not a yearly cost. This is a, a final pricing, at least at the time when you're watching this, October 5th, uh, 2022. And for the short, medium term, it will stay this way. Who knows long term? You know, I cannot commit forever. But if you purchase right now, it is a perpetual license. Uh, and, and yeah, but it's a perpetual license of the current version of the course. And if it's a small update, like I typically do each year, I like append some videos or just slightly modify a couple of things with a new release. Uh, I will probably give it for free, but like this year, for example, it's kind of a massive release I'm doing with the basics 2023. Like all the videos have been remade from scratch. Uh, there's a lot more content. So in this case, uh, I will offer you a cost to upgrade to the new version, but yeah, it's a perpetual license. Neuro, no yearly subscription. You know, I've been toying around in my head with all the different business models. Could it be a monthly fee, an annual subscription? For now, at least in the moment, it's one cost and it's a perpetual license and would probably, probably stay that, that for a while. Oh, I see a couple of people. Rick uh, says you've just upgraded. Uh, thanks, Rick. I hope you enjoyed the, the update. Uh, design tech on Ravel. Oh, John Pearson's in the house. Uh, thanks, John. I appreciate it. And by the way, yeah, I, I mean, I should... John's a pretty cool guy. If you guys don't know, let me go to design tech on Ravel. Am I getting that right? Yeah, design tech on Ravel. This is John Pearson's website. He's famous for creating uh, his hard work on Dynamo. He's working at Team Parallax. And he's created, I think he's just uh, launched a new course, uh, Dynamo for Revit Programming in Python. So if you are not a beginner and want to learn advanced uh, strategies uh, to use Python inside of Dynamo, I think it would be a pretty good resource. Knowing John, I have no doubt that this would be an amazing course. So th thanks for being here, John. Yeah, formally 60 second rivet. <laughs> yeah, somebody says I don't follow at the desk price. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, the course is now $4,000 per, per year. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, Coopersville says, says I took your class at the desk university last week. Great class. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um. Uh, yeah, additional languages. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. Well, it's it's the subtitles. It's not the full course. I wish I could translate the, the book and have using the native language and the Revit videos themselves. Uh, not the case for now, but I think the subtitles can help for sure. As Jose mentioned about the two other courses, if they've been updated to 2023. Uh, that's a great question. I think in this one, let's go to the manage one, for example, it has not been fully updated in the core, in the case of manage, it's been released last year. So in 2022, so not a lot of change since then. However, something that I do with, uh, whenever there's a new release, I do include, in this case, you can see Revit 2023, new features, special pamphlets. So I give this away for free to all course purchasers, uh, a PDF that explains all the new features. So getting you covered. But I say, generally speaking, the videos, like this is the managed course, they're not updated each year because that takes a lot of time. And the great news is that Autodesk don't change that much year over year, as you guys might well know, they get criticized for that. 
but that's good for me because it doesn't take uh in most cases it's not that long to remake the videos or the content is good from one year to the other right but anyway all the new changes in the course in the case of these older courses uh <laughs> yeah are over here in this special pdf and john says that the course is 150 flex tokens <laughs> yeah yeah i should start a tokens uh pricing a strategy that would be so amazing yeah that that would be a good april's full joke i think i'll think about that yeah did i miss any questions i hope i answered everything so far anyway yeah that was for the group training so don't hesitate to contact me if you want to train your team and that's one of the reasons I actually updated this course because it takes a while to update a course. And these days I'm more, mostly more interested in advanced topics like Dynamo and event strategies. But I st I'm still working with clients that need the basics training. And I didn't find the equivalent of the basics course out there. Kind of a super, kind of a short, simple, efficient and beautiful course. Uh, didn't see this out there so i just realized i had to update the course do a major update and it's pretty good for me i'm doing consulting as well so i can use this training to for my clients so i'm i'm mostly done talking about the basics course if you have any, a question about it uh, let me know and then i have kind of a few random other topics i wanted to talk about uh Scover DX says show us the au picks uh, i'm i'm getting there I don't have that much personally, but uh, yeah, I think there's one I should show. Uh, still drinking this non-alcoholic beer. Uh, Revit Pure season four, Revit Pure live season four. So if you like live streams like that, typically I have guests with me. So it's a bit more in interactive, although I'm there's been a lot of great interactions in the chat. Uh, here are all the upcoming guests. Glenn Sinclair is from BIM Objects. And, uh, BIM Content, sorry, <laughs> I'm always confused. BIMcontent.com, which is an Australian website that creates great manufacturing content for Revit. I repeat, great metric manufacturing content. That makes seems contradictory, right? Because internet Revit families are typically not very good. Well, these guys, I uh, thought there was a problem. Maybe I can show their website quickly. Yeah, here's uh, BIM content. You can read their philosophy. It's basically, we think that uh, most BIM content is bad. <laughs> they thought we should do a website with BIM content is actually good. Free families that are high quality. And they do include I'm not paid for them to show show this, by the way, but it's the guest that I have next week. Uh, here are all the families. And what I like about them that you do have a 3D preview. Like this, you can preview and there's a showroom. You can download a container file, Revit container file. Pretty cool stuff, pretty cool stuff. I think it's pretty well done. Uh, there are some other websites out there that I typically don't recommend to my clients and that I would never use because the families are bad quality. They're super heavy and they cause all sorts of problems in your models. Yep. So BIM content is one of the good one. The, the week after, Brenton Weiberg is the creator of RevitFamily.biz, I think. Is that the right? Families that biz, uh, Revit families, Revit family that biz. Yeah, okay, Revit family that biz. He's been on uh, at on BIM After Dark a couple of times, and he's making selling families on his website, window families and kitchen families. So he's becoming a live show that should be fun. Then Benjamin Glutz is the CEO of BIMSmith. So another website that makes manufacturing content. You have System Families Builder as well. Should be interesting. Then the week after that, we got Bill Allen and Benjamin Guller from 
Evolve Lab. Uh, it should be an interesting episode as well. They're not. This episode is not specifically related about families. It's the exception of the season. And it's about automation. One of the cool things they're making, they have a mode that go automatically takes SketchUp models and convert the SketchUp models to Revit models using native elements like Revit walls, Revit roofs, but using the SketchUp model and plenty of other things as well. Paul Alban, do I need to introduce Paul Alban? I mean, he's kind of a legend in the Revit and BIM community. I just saw him at AU actually uh, last week. He was t talking about curvatures and Revit families. I'm not sure what the topic is going to be, but uh, Paul is a legend and this should be fun. And Vincent Dayen Oeft. Vincent is originally from Belgium. He now lives in France. He works at a firm called CAD at Work, I think. I hope I don't get that wrong. And I saw him at Built, another conference in June. He talked about using uh, trigonometry in formulas for Revit families. It was an amazing session. I've learned so much from him. And he wrote a book that is in French. I don't know if it's translated or not. But he's coming to the show and uh, looking forward to it. And this season will be sponsored by Avail. Avail is a content management platform for uh, Revit. You can learn more at getavail.com. And by the way, sponsoring uh, almost every day or every week, I get asked to put promotional links on Revit Pure website. And I always say no because I don't want to uh, put random spam on my website first. And I would never recommend um, my customers and viewers something I, I don't use by myself. I don't use myself, I wouldn't use. In the case of Avail, it's a great product. And so I've only had two sponsors so far, Enscape and Avail. And there are two products I would recommend without any problem. I strongly recommend, in fact. So yeah, just a word to let you know, guys know that I'm very careful about sponsoring. I don't take this lightly. It's only things I endorse myself. So, but thanks to Avail for sponsoring the show. Uh, 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 okay. You love the lineup. Thanks, Dustin. Me too. Uh, Diane uh, from Connecticut asks, if the course has a section on design options, it does. It's actually the final chapter, chapter 46. Where is it? Let's go back to the course. Let's scroll down all the way to chapter 46 right here. Yeah, we do have a chapter. I don't think design options have changed in many years. For like 10 years, I would guess. Or unless I'm wrong. Anyone know if design options changed? I don't think so. I'm following Revit updates pretty consistently. See, so here's the whole thing about design options. The very last chapter in the video. So in this case, for example, you can see I mentioned earlier that videos are bite size. Like the video about design options is three minutes, but it's pretty condensed. And I, I think you still get everything you need to learn about design options or to get started at least. All right, it's almost 3 p.m. Okay, so next week, the next episode of Revit Pure Live will be next week with Glenn Sinclair from BIM Content. <laughs> Almost said BIM Object again. It's BIM Content, very different websites. Uh, uh, Glenn is, I think he's one of the founders. The company created BIMcontent.com. Title of his own, Downloading Great Revit Families, which is typically not something, I don't typically recommend downloading Revit Families online, but if they're well-made, why not? So next week, this will be an evening episode, though, at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I'm almost done here, guys. Uh, yeah, and Scour asked me to talk about AU. I had a blast at AU, man. It was really fun. I met so many people. It was a pretty intense few days. And I had a talk on the, the first day, the, the Tuesday which was during the general session while Andrew Alagnost was speaking about uh, Forma and announced a few things. But uh, a lot of people still showed up. It was all my class was almost full. And I've talked about Denim on current panels. The, the presentation was called a wild, Denim on current panels, a wild brick pattern workflow in Revit. And I think the presentation will be available online soon. 
think it's next week or so. So I'll let you guys know when it's available. You can watch it, replay. And yeah, I'll probably have some live or something like that about the same topics, maybe uh, diving further about it. I've had a pretty good question during the session about documentation, how you would document th this workflow for construction. I thought it was a great question and maybe I would um, explore further. Um, John Pearson in the chat asked if the session was completely full. In theory, it was full, but I know people lined up to get inside of the course, but a lot of people told me, oh, I thought the class was full, so I just went to the general session, but there were still a couple of spots left in the front. Yeah, October 11. Yeah, there you go. And AU, okay, let me find a picture that is mentioned by... I don't have that many pictures of AU. It's coming, let me show you something. Okay, there you go. Uh, so this is a tweet from John Stein. And this is the Revit Influencers Dinner. So I guess I am a Revit influencer. They invited me the Revit team, including Harlan, who's right over here, and Kimberly, who's just over here, uh, working at Autodesk. They invited us to a steakhouse <laughs> to nerd out about Revit and just talk about random things with all these other experts, including Paul Oben, who's going to be on the show soon, Brian McKee, former guest of the show, uh, Desiree and Melissa, who's also been on the show, and Dan, who... He's not Ben yet. He's, I'm going to invite him at some point. I mean, of course, he's amazing. Uh, yeah, many other things. Many other things that happen at AU. I'm actually writing uh, a blog post about it. Try to recap all the lessons learned. John Pearson I also had a great session. Pretty fun, the very last session. And they give us some candies as well. And... Yeah, and a lot of people, people were so nice. Like, they just came up to me, hey, I'm watching your videos on YouTube. It's very nice meeting you. And then I've got to chat with them and ask them what they were doing, what kind of projects they were working on. And yeah, I mean, people in the BIM community are so amazing, so friendly, so supportive. I didn't have a single bad interaction for the whole week I was there. Really fun. It was really, really fun. And I'm going back next year for sure. And I'm hoping to see you there. All right. I wanted to talk about something. I've teased about it on LinkedIn a few months ago. It's uh, cohort-based courses. I've been entertaining this idea. I know my friend Michael Kilkelly from Art Smarter have been doing it for his... Revit uh, add-ins, but the idea is instead of having pre-recorded courses is to have a limited uh, amount of students, let's say 25 to 30 students perhaps, and have a very specific course on, on a very narrow topic. My idea, my initial idea, since we're on the topic of families, mastering advanced Revit families, talking about formulas and arrays, n nested families, shared families, stuff like that, and, but do it live like this, just like this, but on Zoom instead of on YouTube, and people can ask their questions and it would be four main sessions well four that's my initial idea about four live sessions with uh, a curriculum and then q a in office hours if people have questions i jump in i just we just hang out i can answer your questions and what is nice about this is people in the community can also answer one another and help one another that's the what i've heard from other people who have been doing this and it would be short, a two or three weeks course, something like that. And also the possibility of having an online community, some sort of, it could be a Slack room or a Discord. I don't know what exactly, but the idea of having a community. So yeah, my first idea, initial idea was mastering advanced Revit families. I had a few other topics in mind. Uh, automation in Revit could be some sort of Dynamo course. It could be um, about creating a great Revit template, but it must be a pretty narrow topic, I think, for it to work and to be fun. So, for example, I would not do one for beginners. Uh, I prefer doing more advanced, intermediate to advanced topics. 
like even there mastering advanced rivet families i think it would even add, probably add about formulas arrays nested and shared families so not necessarily for beginners so tell me what you think about it in the chat and if there's a topic you would like me to talk about in one of these cohorts Yeah, so I'm ending with this. It's uh, slightly past three o'clock. Uh, the future of Revit Pure. Um, I have went full time on my consulting company last year, which is called, I do have a business score over here. It's called Bin Pure. And because Revit Pure doesn't make much sense as a name when you're consulting, right? I'm not, I'm not biased toward one software. I can work with other softwares as well. So I've created Bin Pure. But eventually, my goal is to take uh, Revit Pure. It, and to merge it with the BIM Pure brand so I can explore other software as well, not only Revit. And also to potentially make sure that I don't have any uh, uh, names conflict with Autodesk and people don't, don't get confused <coughs> with that, or that Autodesk don't decided on I like me using uh, the Revit name. So that's a long-term goal. For now, we're keeping the name Revit Pure, but it's in my plan. I'm working on a new website. Um, yeah, been thinking about that for a while, but I want to take my time and really nail the new website and make sure that I get it right. And until then, everything will keep the name of Revit Pure. But in the future, you might see this specific logo uh, again, but not now. All right, so I think it, uh, I just went through the whole thing. Isn't that fun? And almost one hour. Okay. What else do I have to say? <laughs> uh, okay. Well, once again, uh, it's the launch day. I'm super happy about it. I've been working on the course, the update all summer. Uh, so Revit Pure Basics 2023. Uh, go over there. Click on get basics, revitpure.com. Just scroll down a bit and you can see the deal right now. The coupon should be embedded. If not, you can add it, code fall 2023. Uh, or you can combine all of our packages on this special deal over here. So yeah, pretty happy with the new beginners course. And don't forget, if you want to use it for uh, group training, like uh, some other firms did, uh, send me an email and actually you'll find a link to book a chat with me using Calendly. Uh, you can book a chat to talk about it. It's on the Revit Pure Basics. If you scroll down a little bit close to the bottom, you'll see that. I think that's it. Uh, DS Perry says, I've been following you since 2017. Keep up the good work, simple and easy to follow. Yeah, it's really design target and revel. 60 seconds rivet. Yeah, you too, right? You want to get away from just doing rivet. That makes sense. Uh, Peter asks, have, have you made any survey about how people manage in real life after a basics course? Uh, actually, it's funny. Last year, I had somebody on the live stream I did for the managed course and the chat says, you know, I've been using basics and now I'm a BIM manager at my course. I'm like, that's a killer quote, man. I'm using that again for marketing materials. I think I did forget about it. I didn't add it, but, uh, but I'll need to do a few more surveys after this one for sure. So I'm staying a couple more minutes, then we'll wrap this off again, rivetpure.com slash basics to get the new update. And, and Mikhail says, don't worry about the logo. Uh, the content is more important. Yeah, the, the content is, it's true that content is more important, but for me, it, it was important to create um, a brand, something that feels uh, wholly thought about, like not just random ideas there needs to be cohesion among everything i create and i think that that adds to simplicity and fun of the course i'm trying to create so even though yes the content is more important but the logo it's it, it helps me to create a, let's say a visual landscape for the course 
anyway, these are the kind of things I, I think about. And the reason why I hire artists to create the cover arts. And just to make it a little more fun and, you know, cover hard like this. How many Rivet courses would have something like this? For sure, I'm trying to distinguish. Oh, that's a good quote, John. People remember how you made them feel, not necessarily and it, everything you said to them. That's good. <laughs> uh, Sean B asks, I joined a bit late. Are there major differences between the launch of 2023 versus other basics design package? Uh, if already answered, I apologize. I'll rewatch the stream after. Uh, 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 yes, well, this new version, it's an update over the basics course and the new content yeah, you can recap on, uh, if you want to get the full story, but there are some new chapters about families, about uh, plugins you can use. All of the video videos have been remade from scratch. And I think uh, my video making skills have improved since the first version of the course was released in 2017. I think I've got much better at creating uh, videos. So I think the new version videos are pretty killer, I would say. And, and the new content, I would say one of the biggest chapter about how to uh, work on BIM 360 and cloud models. And yeah, now all videos have been made for each sub chapter instead of one video for each chapter. Uh, so smaller videos. And now you've got text and images. That means below each video, you will also get a text and image version. So people can decide, oh, I would rather watch a video or I no, actually I'd rather uh, just read the text is fine for me since maybe it's a topic that's not as important to you. And one of the new things as well are um, subtitles. Uh, in this one, we only have English and French, but in the coming days, Spanish should be everywhere as well. So uh, subtitles in English, French and Spanish. Okay. Uh, Diane asks, uh, what course to suggest for next level of the basics, especially for design options? Not been working with BIM since 2020 and heading to a new workplace. I want to brush up skills recommendation. I think the basics course is, is, would still be a good choice for you, especially the late chapters, advanced chapters are good. And I think with that with the pamphlets, the brief pamphlets that are so included in the course, you should get pretty far ahead. I think that should be pretty helpful. Uh, Sean B. Yes, it's a pretty big update over Revit 2020. And I will say the update I used to uh, uh, append the video. So add a small part at the end of the videos to say, here are the new features, the new version. For this one, I redid the whole thing. So you won't see all Revit logos in the interface anymore. Although I would say though, I, I do get one question. I'm using Revit 2020 or Revit 2021, Revit 2022. Can I still use this course? The answer is yes. I do mention whenever there's a new feature from a Revit 2023, like the icons on the project browser, I mentioned that's specific to the new version. So if you're using an older version, since not that much has changed recently, it's still great for you. I would say if you're using Revit 2018 or older, maybe not though, <laughs> because in 2019, they had a pretty big overhaul with the tabs. Uh, and a few other changes as well. All right, I think I've answered to uh, pretty much all the questions. Good, good, good. So next week at 8 p.m. on Wednesday as well, Rivet Pure Lives are always on Wednesday. Didn't want to compete with Jeff from the Rivet Kid, who's doing his show on Thursdays. Uh, with Glenn Sinclair from BIMcontent.com. We'll talk about man manufacturer's content. So if you're wondering, I also get a question, where do I find good families? Well, the next season of Rivet Pure Lives all, is going to be all about families. Um, and using online content typically is not a good idea. In this case, there are some good options as, out there as well. So with Glenn Sinclair, and I think that's it. Uh, yeah, thanks to everybody. Thanks for everyone in the chat for being that interactive. Lots of great questions. And if you have more questions, nick at rivetpure.com. Email me and I'll get back to you. So thank you, everybody, and see you. Bye-bye. See you next week.